Hi friends! If you're new here, welcome. This video is going to be what I learned in one year of hand sewing. I've been hand sewing for definitely more than a year, but I've only gotten serious about it in about the last year and a half. If you follow my channel, you know that I have done quite a few entirely hand sewn garments, which I will put in a playlist over here. I also just do generally a lot of hand finishing on machine constructed garments. In this video, I'm not going to be going over actual stitches, but I'm going to be talking about thimbles, a little bit about thread, about needle sizes, kind of ideal needle size, and then about actual sewing technique, and the things that I've found help to improve speed and consistency and stitch size. So to start off with thimbles, I highly recommend you get used to using a thimble. There are quite a few different kinds of thimbles, I'm going to show some of them here. Thimbles come in different sizes. This is something that I definitely didn't know before I got into hand sewing, but they come in different sizes and you need to get one that actually fits your finger. So if you, like me about two years ago, had only seen these really cheap uh, standard size thimbles that you can find at um, sewing stores or craft stores in the US, and you've been like, what, what am I supposed to do with this? Mine is bent, by the way, because I tried to make it I tried to make it work for my fingers, which it just doesn't, because uh, it's too big, but yeah, you need a thimble that fits. So here are some thimbles that I have. Here are some thimbles that I have that fit me and work for me. So you want your thimble to go on the middle finger of your dominant hand or your sewing hand, whichever one that is, and it should not fall off. So this is kind of your standard metal thimble. It has a closed tip and all of these little dots which are to catch the needle. You do want to have a thimble that has some kind of dots or texture to have something to catch your needle on. There are some like decorative ceramic thimbles that I guess could be used for some things, but for the purpose of holding it in your sewing hand and on your middle finger, you want one that actually will catch the needle. If my nails are a little bit longer, I will use my Taylor's thimble, which as you can see, looks quite similar, except this one has an open top. This makes it a little bit easier to continue to work with your hands when you're not actually sewing. It also is a little bit less sweaty. I have found that out of these three thimbles, my standard metal thimble, my Taylor's thimble, and then this vintage plastic thimble, they all work great, but the plastic one gets a little bit sweatier. The normal one is kind of your standard, I guess, and then the Taylor's thimble is the least sweaty, I've found. This yellow one is a vintage plastic thimble that I think I got at a yard sale. It's kind of hideous, but it works really well, honestly, and if you're not um, trying to look aesthetic on the internet while you sew, this is a great option and you can often find these at yard sales or estate sales. Depending on the way that you hold your hand and the way that you push the needle through the fabric, you may want a certain type of thimble, you may not want a tailor's thimble because some people like to push the needle through with the tip of their finger and obviously if there's no metal there or nothing, to catch the needle, this thimble is gonna do nothing for you. So you do wanna keep that in mind, but personally I like this, and if you have longer nails, this is a great option. You may wanna just learn how to use a tailor's thimble so that you can keep your nails. But that is, of course, up to personal preference. There's also leather thimbles, which I don't have a whole lot of experience with, but they serve the same purpose, and some people find them a little bit more beginner friendly. So a thimble should not fall off, it should stay on your finger. You should be able to use your hand as you normally would. Uh, I mean, sometimes it can be a little annoying if you're like trying to cut and stuff. Generally, you should just be able to do anything you would normally do with your hands with your thimble on. Let's talk about thread. I'm not super picky about thread, but I do have some thoughts and some ideas and some things that I've learned and experienced about thread. Is natural fiber thread better for hand sewing? Honestly, I would say generally yes. There are some better quality synthetic threads that I've used that are nice. There are some polyester threads that like feel stretchy, which is really weird to me. I do sew with them on occasion, I will if I have to. It's not like, oh, I'm never gonna do that. If I have a polyester thread, even if it's low quality in a color and I don't have any other thread in that color, I will hand sew with it. But if I'm choosing a thread specifically to hand sew with, I will generally choose a thread that is a cotton thread or a linen thread or a silk thread. Thread waxing. I love waxing my thread. There are different ways to wax thread. All of them require some beeswax, a little chunk of beeswax. Uh, personally, I like to run my thread through the beeswax, make sure that I get all of it, and then press it under a pressing cloth. And I put it under the pressing cloth, put the iron on top, and then like pull the thread, and then turn it around to the other side and pull. Some people prefer to just take that thread after they wax it and roll it between their fingers, which doesn't melt the wax into the thread as well, but some people 
people prefer that kind of grippiness. Personally, I really like my ironed wax thread because it really makes the thread smooth and slick and it it has a, a different feeling when you pull it through the fabric. It also makes it a little bit less prone to tangling. So you will notice that a piece of ironed wax thread, if you like hold it and like drop it like you would with a chain and watch all the chain links kind of turn into liquid, if you do that with a piece of unwaxed thread, it will curl up a lot more than if you do it with a piece of wax thread. So it does make the thread less prone to tangling, which I love. Waxing just generally makes your thread stronger and more durable, so I do recommend trying it and figuring out what kind of waxing technique you like and what works for you. It's a big enough difference that I don't think you need to have experience hand sewing or be sensitive to the differences in thread to feel it. I think you could just give almost anyone uh, a piece of waxed thread that's been ironed and a piece of wax thread that hasn't and they would be able to feel the difference pulling it through the fabric. So definitely try both ways and see what you like. One thing about thread waxing is that beeswax can stain a little bit so if you're working with like a bright white and you want to keep it bright white you may prefer to not wax your thread but generally it's not a big deal. I wax my thread on pretty much every color so that's that. So as far as how long to cut your pieces of thread, that really depends on what you like and what you're doing, but generally the rule is you need to be able to pull your thread through the fabric and tension it comfortably. So the longest pieces of thread that I will use are about, if I hold it out all the way, the length of my arm to here, which is pretty long. Um, generally that's like the longest that you'd ever wanna go. Uh, a normal rule is kind of just the length of your arm. If you go to your other shoulder, it's gonna be a little bit tricky in the beginning to work with that piece of thread, depending on kind of what your priorities are. Uh, but yeah, generally, the length of your arm is a good length. Moving on to needles. Uh, first of all, needle sizing, the bigger the number is, the smaller the eye. So a size 10 is going to have a smaller eye than a size 7. And if it's the same type of needle from the same brand, a size 7 is going to be a larger needle and a size 10 is going to be a smaller needle. Uh, I know that there is a little bit of inconsistency between different brands, but that's the way the sizing goes. There are also many different types of needles. So there are your applique needles, your embroidery needles, tapestry needles, beading needles, basting needles, sharps, betweens, which is a short quilter's needle, my favorite needle. We're gonna talk about that in a minute. But yeah, there are various different types of needles that have different proportions. So for example, a size eight between has a bigger eye than a size 10 sharp, but it's actually a shorter needle. Personally, what I have found and what I know a lot of people find is that using the smallest needle that you can use is generally the best and results in the most consistent stitching and the fastest stitching and just kind of the easiest time sewing. But the thing about using really tiny needles is that it takes a while to get used to and I know this kind of uh, deters a lot of people because if you pick up a needle and it feels tiny and fiddly and annoying, you're not going to want to keep sewing with that needle. Uh, which I think is kind of where your sewing goals come in. If you only plan on doing a little bit of hand sewing here and there, you may want to just stick to what you're comfortable with. There's really no need to use a teeny tiny needle that you're going to struggle with if you don't plan on doing a lot of hand sewing. Personally, I have found that it takes five, six, maybe eight hours of sewing with a needle to get used to the size when you're sizing down. Also needle brands. The needles that you can get at like a craft store or fabric store here in the US do tend to be pretty darn low quality. Um, so if you do plan on doing a lot of hand sewing, I recommend buying your needles online from a place that has a little bit of a higher quality standard and also uh, allows you to actually get a larger number of needles of the same size. Because usually if you go to a craft store, they come in like variety packs or it's like five and they're all different sizes or something. If you want to do a lot of hand sewing, you're probably going to want a lot of the same needle. I really like these John James needles. They're actually not really more expensive uh, from what I remember. There are also these needles which are Roxanne, excuse me, Roxanne needles which are a little bit more expensive. Um, they're also very good quality. Buying your needles online is going to be the same or slightly more expensive, but you have a lot more control of what needle you're getting and you can get a higher quality needle. So I do recommend it. So when I first started really getting into hand sewing, I was using a needle, probably something like this. I know it wasn't this exact needle, but this right here is a size seven sharp. And I purchased these needles as well as these needles. And let's see. 
and these needles. Oh, there's also this brand, Bowen. These are good too. I looked at these and I was like, this is tiny. How am I ever gonna be able to tell the difference between these needles? There's like a 16th of an inch difference on some of them. This is ridiculous. I can't use this needle. But I took some time and I started using them and I started from the largest one, which is the size 10 sharp here. And if you look at, okay. So this is probably similar, this size seven, uh, sharp is probably similar to what I was using previously. So I'm gonna put this next to these three needles and you can see that it's quite a bit longer. I forget how many hours of sewing, but it was surprisingly short before I could actually tell the difference between these three little sizes of needles just by holding it and working with it. And I do find now that it actually does change my stitching speed and consistency even between these needle sizes. So my preferred needle is this needle right here, which is a size eight between. I also have size nine betweens, which the sizing is weird and they actually are pretty much exactly the same length, just one has a slightly larger eye. But yeah, so if you look at this needle, I will say that I have very small hands, so this needle may and probably will be too small for a lot of people. I'm not saying like you should absolutely use this specific needle and this specific needle size, but I think taking the time to work with needles that are smaller than what you're used to, to see if it does bring you faster stitching and more consistent stitching in the long term is worth it. Um, although I will say I have not tried smaller than this and I don't think I will because if you look at the way that I'm holding this needle and as you can see there is literally no more room. If this needle were to get an eighth of an inch shorter I would probably start poking myself with my pointer finger when I grab onto it. So I will not be sizing down anymore from this. If you want a measurement here is a standard ruler. Now, of course, some things that you sew, you may wanna use a thicker thread or you may just need a longer needle and there are definitely going to be instances where you don't wanna use the tiniest needle ever, but I honestly really love this needle and I find that I can do most things with it. Um, and that's partly because it has that slightly larger eye than like your size 10 or your size 11 needle because it is a size eight needle. Um, but it's still super short. And also because it's a size eight needle, that means it's a little bit thicker, uh, which means that it doesn't bend or break as much, which I love. Different people have different preferences for the proportions of their needle. This is what it looks like when I hold a size eight, and then this is what it looks like when I hold a size 10 sharp. So play around with needle sizes. If you wanna do a lot of hand sewing, I do recommend seeing how small you can go, but none of that matters if your sewing technique isn't good. So that is what we're going to talk about next. Let's talk about how you hold your needle just in your hand. What I like to do is hold it between my thumb and my pointer finger like this, pinch it, and then take my middle finger with the thimble and put it behind the needle to apply pressure to the back of the needle. So sometimes it looks a little bit more like this. It's kind of hard because I'm, I'm showing it at an awkward angle. Some people turn it and go like this a little bit. Uh, obviously this is a Taylor symbol, so it doesn't work. But some people hold it more like this. Personally, I do like the sideways and I hold it like this. So as far as thread, I tend to sew with a single thread. I don't knot the two ends together. If you're doing something like trying to sew on a button really quickly uh, or even not quickly, generally what I like to do is to sew with one thread. So right now I have, I have a needle and then I have my waxed thread. We follow this. There you go, so one tail ends here and then one keeps going and ends there. So I'm using black thread on white fabric so it's easier to see what I'm doing, uh, but you know, generally match your thread to your fabric. Or use decorative thread, whatever you want. I'm not gonna be talking about specific stitches, I'm just gonna be talking about sewing technique in general. Sometimes starting out can be a little bit tricky, Generally, the way that people tie their thread off is to do three back stitches on top of each other. For me, the goal with sewing is to make the movement that you do as simple as possible. Because if you think about it, like if I hold the needle and then I put it in the fabric and then I move it this way and then I move it this way and then I push it and then I pull it and then I pull it. You saw that was like eight different movements. Like I picked it up and I, I picked it up and I moved my fingers and it was a little bit of a disaster. So you want to make the whole thing as simple as you possibly can in order to keep it consistent and to eventually get into kind of a rhythm. Holding my needle the way that I showed you and then I'm putting it in here, 
pushing it through this side, and then in the same motion, this finger is pushing the needle through, and then these fingers grab it, and then these fingers come this way and pull out, which is where your tension comes from. So some people go this way, this way, some people go this way. Uh, I like to go this way, that's just what I find is the easiest and most natural for me, but figure out what, you, what works for you. And that is an important step. You have inserting your needle, you have putting pressure with the thimble, you have pulling it out, and then you have tensioning your thread. Let's do that again. The needle goes in. In the same motion, we push it through with our thimble, grab it, and pull. And I will do a few more of those. And you can see how simplified the movement is, right? You see that it goes in and it comes out in the same movement. We're gonna zoom out just so you can see my hand motion. So this stitching technique should stay pretty much exactly the same and be the exact same motion for a vast variety of different stitches. So for your back stitches, for your whip stitches, for your felling stitches, for your herringbone stitches, this hand should be doing exactly the same motion every time. And this takes a while to get used to, but once you get used to it, you can really get into a rhythm and it really helps with your consistency and your speed. And of course, sometimes there are gonna be cases when there's really thick layers and you have to kind of stop and like really push the needle through the fabric, uh, which of course is fine, you have to do that. But this is also why you wanna have a thimble because with a thimble, you can actually put a decent amount of pressure behind that needle without messing up your sewing technique. So yeah, there are gonna be some times when it's just too much and you have to maybe even get out the pliers to pull that needle through, but if you're using a thimble, you should be able to really put some force behind that needle without messing up your technique and without messing up your rhythm. And this is why, like you can do almost the same sewing technique with no thimble, and if it's a super lightweight fabric and a small needle, you might be okay, uh, at least for a little while, but I do really recommend getting used to the thimble because that way when you uh, when you are doing hours and hours, or if you are using a thicker fabric, you can still keep your sewing technique consistent. Now, as far as stitches like a running stitch, that is different because usually with a running stitch, you're going to want to go up and down through the fabric multiple times before pulling the thread. So different people have different strategies for doing this. Personally, my strategy is to use my left hand, my non sewing hand, to move the fabric up and down rather than moving my needle like this. So. Let's see if I can demonstrate that. I'm just gonna sew a line of running stitches off of this hem. So for me, doing this motion with my other hand rather than with my sewing hand allows me to continue using that same sewing technique pretty much with this hand and just kind of pause there for a second while I slowly push the needle through and move it with my other hand. And I cannot stress this enough, it takes time. You will not pick up a thimble the first time and a tiny needle and just be able to do fast and consistent stitching right away. It's gonna take some time and you have to give it hours. Like, I'm not saying it's 10,000 hours or anything, but like, give it a solid eight, 10 hours before you say like, can't do this. But also, uh, definitely, try different things, like what angle that you like to sew at compared to your body is something that you probably want to figure out. And I mean, I can sew anywhere from like this angle to like this angle, but I do have a preference for sewing things generally this way. So like things like that are nice to know about how you like to sew. I know there's a, a heck of a lot more that we could talk about about hand sewing, but I will leave it at that for today. I hope this video was helpful. If you do wanna see tutorials from me on maybe some of the less already tutorialed stitches, cause I mean, I'm not gonna do a running stitch tutorial. I'm not gonna do a back stitch tutorial. There are plenty of those out there that are wonderful, but say if you wanted like a herringbone stitch tutorial, I would be happy to do something like that. So let me know in the comments down below and I will see you next time. Bye.